So I just got off work and I decided to go by the public library so that I could pick up some stuff. And this is my library haul. Oh my God. I'm not going to be able to speak in this voice for the whole video. Um, yeah. So, um, I'm going to stop. <laughs> it's real annoying. Okay. So yeah, I stopped by the uh, public library and got a few things. I got a book and I got four movies because I've check out DVDs there um, a lot. And uh, yeah, so the book that I got is Fire and Blood from George R.R. R. Martin. Um, it is the history of the Targaryen family, um, but it's only like volume one and it's freaking huge. It's like 700 pages. <sighs> and I haven't been in much of a reading mood, so um, I don't know if that's gonna get done, but I got it anyway, just in case. Um, just in case I wanted to read it. And then I got four DVDs because, like I said, I like getting DVDs there. So the first DVD that I picked up is Venom. Um, I don't think I'm gonna like this. I've heard that it's really bad, but I wanted to give it a shot because, you know, why not? Um, I'm not big on Venom anyway. Um, the whole Eddie Brock kind of thing is not really my cup of tea. Um, and it could just be because, uh, Spider-Man 3 really, really, was really, really bad. And that's what I think of. I think of Topher Grace as Venom. And, um, maybe that's not the best thing. Uh, but Tom Hardy, I do like Tom Hardy, so, uh, we'll see. And, uh, special features. It has a Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse sneak peek. But I don't need that because I picked up Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Now, I have heard really good things about this. Um, my boss watched it and said that it was really good. And, uh, her opinion's pretty good when it comes to superhero movies. And, um, I know a lot of other people have really liked it. And, um, I've been looking forward to it. I've had it on my list of things to watch since it came out. But um, I don't go see movies in the theater very often, so I wanted to wait till it came out on DVD, and it's out. And so now I have this, and this I will be watching that very soon. So what else did I get? I also picked up Mary Poppins Returns, because I like Mary Poppins, and I like Emily Blunt, so why not? Um, I am kind of afraid that Lin-Manuel Miranda is going to have a really bad Cockney accent, and I don't know. But um, I don't know if I'm here for that or if I'm not. Uh, but we'll see. And last I picked up Stan and Ollie, which is about uh, Laurel and Hardy. And uh, they are a like silent um, duo, comedic duo. And it's about their, let me see what it says. It's about a variety hall tour of Britain in 1953 that they did. It was after they were, weren't really as famous anymore. And um, I think Ollie, what does it say? Ollie, um, his health was failing and everything. So it's probably gonna make me cry. But um, I thought I'd pick it up. It's got Steve Coogan and um, John C. Riley, right? Yes, that's right. So uh, this looks like it would be pretty good. So I'm hoping for, you know, good things. I'll let you guys know how all of them turn out. In case you wondered, this is what it looks like after I take a nap in the recliner <laughs> after work. Ta-da! <laughs> yeah, I should probably do something about that. Okay, hopefully that looks a little bit better. So that last video that you saw was from about a week and a half ago, and um, I thought that I would uh, do like a little update and tell you guys what I thought about the movies that I got from the library. I've already taken them back because they were only, um, I only have them checked out for a week. But uh, yeah, I did, I did end up watching all of them. A lot of times when I check out movies there, I end up watching maybe two out of Normally I get like three at a time. I end up watching two of the three, but I actually watched all four of them. So yay. <laughs> all right. So, um, I'll tell you a little review kind of thing, I guess, of, you know, each video, each movie. <laughs> so, uh, first, the first one that I watched was Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse and I really enjoyed it. I'm not like I, I enjoy comic book movies. I don't really read comic books that often. Occasionally I will. And um, I don't know if you can see them, but I do have some comic books back there. Uh, but most of those are uh, Fables comic books. Um, Fables and Jack of Fables. And um, I think I have like Serenity because, <laughs> you know, Firefly. <laughs> but those are mostly my Fables and Jack of Fables. I have the whole series of Jack of Fables. I do not have all of Fables, although it has finished and I need to get the uh, 
I need to get the trade paperbacks of the others. But um, I don't read a lot of like superhero comic books. I have read some, I just don't read them like all the time. Anyway, but like I said, I'm not really that into superhero comic books, but I do like watching superhero movies. So I've watched, you know, all of, well, I haven't watched all of the MCU because I didn't watch The Incredible Hulk, but most people didn't watch The Incredible Hulk, so. And then I've watched pretty much every Spider-Man movie and uh, most of the X-Men movies, except for Dark Phoenix, because I have not gone to the theater to see it. It just came out. But yeah, I watch superhero movies and um, I enjoy them for the most part. Uh, there are some that are better than others, of course. And Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is definitely one that is better than most. <laughs> I really liked it. Um, I I don't really know that much about Miles Morales because I, I guess I know a little bit more about Peter Parker because Peter Parker, of course, is the one that is usually Spider-Man in the movies and everything. And uh, yeah, so I've, I've never read anything about Miles Morales. So I thought it was a really good introduction to that character. And um, I laughed so much watching that movie. Okay, I can tell you this too. Usually when... I, Usually when I'm watching a movie, I play games on my phone because I have like um, little pixel apps where I'm filling in pixel pictures. I don't know how to explain it. It's like color by number kind of stuff. Uh, so I do that on my phone usually when I'm watching movies. It, it really says something about a movie if I don't pick up my phone at all to play a, a game on there. And I did not pick up my phone the whole time that I was watching that movie. So... That is, that is a good thing. Uh, so yeah, that, that tells you that it had my attention the whole time. I really enjoyed it. I laughed a lot. I gasped at one point because I was not expecting um, one of the uh, bad guy reveals. So yeah, because like I said, I don't know Miles Morales' story. I don't know his character and everything. So I, um, I actually gasped at one point. And if you've watched the movie, you probably know what point it is. But um, anyway, yeah, it was really funny. Um, because it just completely caught me off guard. And I don't know why, because I should have known, but whatever. So yeah, I really enjoyed that one. I would definitely recommend that, especially if you like superhero movies. Uh, it is it is strange that it's animated, because I don't usually watch animated uh, superhero stuff. I've probably seen some, like, Batman cartoons, and I know I used to watch X-Men, um, but I don't really watch superhero animated stuff. So uh, yeah, but it was really good. I enjoyed it a lot. I loved all the voices in it. I mean, I'm a big fan of Jake Johnson anyway, because uh, I love Nick from New Girl. <laughs> He's like one of my favorite characters. I love his little awkward moonwalk out the door. I really like Jake Johnson and having him as like older Peter Parker was really great. Um, the guy who did Miles Morales, I thought he did a really good job. I would definitely watch it again. Uh, yeah. Since I was in the whole Spider-Man groove, I don't know, whatever. I went ahead and watched Venom and um, it was a movie. It was okay, I guess. I mean, I don't think I'll ever watch it again. I do like Tom Hardy, uh, but I've never really liked Venom. I do like the guy who played the bad guy. I've seen him in a few things and I really like him, um, but I didn't really like him in this that much. Uh, Michelle Williams is in it too, um, and I do like her. Like I said, I'm not like a big Venom fan. Plus the whole time I was sitting there wondering why it was set in San Francisco. Maybe that's where the whole Venom and Eddie Brock stuff happens in the comic books, I don't know. Because I think of him as a Spider-Man villain, and I know that Spider-Man is in New York, so what the heck is he doing in San Francisco? So the whole movie I was just sitting there going, why are they in San Francisco? I don't understand why they're in San Francisco. <laughs> Maybe it's just because I am not a comic book reader. So yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to think if there was anything that I really liked in it. I'm having a hard time thinking. I'll say that I was on my phone the whole time. Like after the first like 30 minutes, I was on my phone playing games. What did I like anything about it? I did kind of like the whole thing with the doctor. The like dynamic between the doctor and Michelle Williams's character and Eddie Brock. I kind of like that. I don't know. There was something kind of cute about that, but what? I don't know. <laughs> Other than that, no, not really. It was, like I said, it was a movie. <laughs> That's about the best thing I can say about it. All right, so moving on. What else did I watch? Next, I watched Mary Poppins Returns. Now, I like the original Mary Poppins. Um, I know that when I did the other video, I said, oh gosh, is Lynn manuel Miranda going to have a Cockney accent? He did. <laughs> 
I mean, it was all right. <laughs> I do like, I do like him. I liked his character. And um, I, I'm going to spoil things for you, by the way. Uh, so yeah, she shows up. She does a pretty good version of Mary Poppins, um, Emily Blunt. She's, I, I like Emily Blunt anyway. She was a good enough Mary Poppins. I have nothing against her. Um, I liked pretty much everybody that was in the movie. The music in it was okay. I, some of the, some of the songs were really cute. Um, a few of the sequences in it, I didn't care. I couldn't get interested in them. Like there's this one part where they go into a, like a vase bowl, tureen. I don't know what it is exactly. Uh, but they go into it and there's like, um, there's a horse in a carriage and it takes them to this place where there's like a big circus tent and they go in and, um, Mary and Jack, which is Lin-Manuel Miranda's uh, character, they do this little song and dance number and everything, and I didn't really like it that much. Um, there were a couple of other places, a couple of other sequences that I didn't like either that much, but I mean, overall it was okay, and um, I wouldn't mind watching it again. There were a couple of cameos, which were really cute. You know how in the original Mary Poppins, there are chimney sweeps, and they do their little um, step in time uh, song. I've always hated that song. That's like my least favorite song probably of all of um, <laughs> Mary Poppins. And uh, of course there's one of those in here. They're lamp lighters instead of chimney sweeps. The song I actually liked. It was uh, Trip the Light Fantastic. And um, it was really cute. Although for some reason when I'm thinking of it, it I'm thinking of a Christmas song instead. And I... Th what song is it? Oh, it's the... We need a little Christmas. Um, that song? <laughs> I can't think of any of the other words to it. But for some reason, I'm hearing Trip the Light Fantastic to that tune. And I don't think it was that tune. <laughs> but that's how it is in my head. So I'm, I'm hearing it to that tune. And, um, okay. That was an okay song. And the only thing is, it went on too freaking long. Because they'd have this whole dance segment and... When there are really long dance sections in musicals, I'm, I am out of it so fast. But the song was cute and I did like it. And then there was another song um, that was, oh my, that was really cute. And um, I can't remember the name of it. I'm gonna have to look it up. Oh, it's Trip a Little Light Fantastic. Excuse me. Whatever. What is the name of that song? It was so cute. The Place Where Lost Things Go. That's what it is. That one was really cute. I like that one a lot. And um, there was like a little bit of that later on in the movie too, which was really adorable. Oh, uh, Meryl Streep is in it and she sings a song. Um, not surprising that she sings because, you know, she's sang in other movies before. But um, I didn't really like that whole sequence with her either. <laughs> okay. It seems like I really hated this movie, but I didn't. There were parts of it that I didn't like and then there were parts of it that I really did like and um honestly that's probably how it is with their original Mary Poppins also so um yeah so the other one that I had was Stan and Ollie which is about uh Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy and it takes place in like 1953 I think it is which is right before Ollie passed away and um it's during their tour of like London and um, Ireland and other places in the UK. And uh, it was, I said that it was gonna make me cry probably. It did. <laughs> um, I've, I've always loved like silent movies and um, I haven't really watched a lot of uh, Laurel and Hardy stuff. I've seen some of their, um, some of their movies. I've always been more of a uh, Buster Keaton and Harold Lloyd fan. Yeah, I, I used to know a lot about, <laughs> about silent movie comedians, which is kind of strange, but uh, yeah. I like most of Chaplin's stuff, but um, I was definitely more of a Keaton and uh, Lloyd fan. It was nice to kind of see a little bit more about the end of the Laurel and Hardy story. And uh, like I said, it made me cry. It was good. I liked it. There's not really much to say about it. The um, two leads, it was uh, Steve Coogan was playing uh, Laurel and um, John C. Riley was Hardy. And uh, they did a really good job of making them look like the characters, but you could still tell who they, you know, who the actors were. But um, I said the characters, I mean the, the people, you know, <laughs> not really characters, they were actual, actual people. Um, but yeah, it was, it was really good. Uh, if you like Laurel and Hardy, 
especially. Uh, but also if you just like silent movies and um, old Hollywood kind of stuff, I think that you would probably like it. So I would recommend that one also. The only one I wouldn't recommend out of that whole list is Venom. And um, yeah, it was just not that great. Uh, it's okay to watch like once and then forget that it ever happened. <laughs> but uh, all three of the others were really good. I mean, first of all, I would say uh, number one out of all of those would have been um, into the Spider-Verse, uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, definitely. And then probably, um, probably Stan and Ollie. That one was really good. So I would probably put that one in second place out of those four. And then Mary Poppins Returns and then Venom Dead Last, of course. Um, but also, uh, I had a book from, I checked out a book at the same time and I still have that book. And of course it is Fire and Blood by, uh, George Martin. Um, George R.R. R. Martin, excuse me. Uh, uh, if you don't know who that is is the guy who wrote um a song of ice and fire series or i say wrote <laughs> he's still writing them and um instead of writing <laughs> winds of winter the sixth book in the series he decided he was gonna write uh, fire and blood and this is only volume one look how freaking huge this thing is it's 700 pages um and it's only about like the first um half of the reign of the targaryens so uh yeah that is what I'm currently reading. I just started reading it yesterday, actually, and I am on page 140 something. Nope, not even that far yet. 134. I'm on page 134. Um, I am going to have to speed read this thing if I want to actually finish it before it's due because I have, I think, like nine or ten days to read this. So I'm trying to read about 100 pages a day and um, that's what I'm going to be doing as soon as I finish making this video because um, I have not done all of my 100 pages for today. I've got like 70 something, well about 70 left um, to catch up on that. And uh, yeah, so that's what I'm reading and uh, I like it so far. It's kind of like a history book and um, I, you probably can tell by some of my other videos that I like history. Uh, so I think it's very interesting and um, it's about a lot of, um, a lot of stuff from pre Game of Thrones stuff. I keep pointing back there because I have the other books back there um, in case you didn't know. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's why I keep going like that. <laughs> Those back there. It's got a lot of stuff, like a lot of pre Game of Thrones things in it. And um, right now I have only read about the first three kings. The first one, of course, was Aegon the Conqueror. He had his two sisters with him and they conquered Westeros. And uh, yeah, so I've read all about him. And then, of course, his sons both uh, were kings. Uh, the first one was, um, it was Annas. I'm going to say it Annas because I want to keep saying it Anus, And then I realized that what that sounds like. And uh, it's spelled A-E-N-Y-S. <laughs> but uh, so I'm going to call him Ennis. Uh, so him and then Megor or Megor, however you want to pronounce it, uh, the cruel. So um, he was he was a very, very bad guy. But um, I've just gotten to the point where uh, Jaehaerys um, was coronated. So that is where I'm at right now. I'm liking it so far, though. Like I said, I like history. And even though this is fake history, I'm really digging it. Uh, I'm, I'm liking it a lot. And um, I don't know when the second volume is going to come out, but the second volume will be like, it will have all the stuff with like the Mad King and um, with um, the other egg on that most people know from Duncan Egg. If you don't watch Game of Thrones or read the books, you probably don't know any of the stuff that I'm talking about, but I am enjoying it. So that's, that's what matters to me. But uh, yeah, that is what I have checked out from the library and read lately. And I also finally finished the ABC murders, which is why I finally started Fire and Blood. I don't know why it took me so freaking long to read that book because it wasn't very long. I probably could have read it in like four hours, but it just took me so long to read it. I, I don't know if I just couldn't get into it or what, but uh, yeah. So I, the next, um, the next Agatha Christie novel that I will be reading is Murder in Mesopotamia. So um, I will be reading that one as soon as I finish Fire and Blood. So uh, yeah, just in case you are keeping up with that. Don't know why you would, but there you go. So uh, I guess that is it for this uh, video and I will go ahead and say goodbye and see you next time. Bye. I still say that really weird. <laughs>